quiet on set. Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda. And I'm Lindsay. Welcome back to the second episode of Blood and Black Lace. We're going to be talking about the Bell Witch from Adams, Tennessee. I'm actually from that area, so I grew up hearing about many stories, especially the story involving the Bell Witch. The first time I heard about this story was when you and I were discussing our episode list. This story is super fascinating and downright scary. Well, the legend of the Bell Witch started about 200 years ago in Adams, Tennessee. The Bell Witch legend is centered around the 19th century Bell family in northwest Robertson County, Tennessee. In 1804, John Bell and his family migrated from North Carolina to the hills of Tennessee on 320 acres of land. The disturbances didn't actually start until 10 years later. Unknowing to John, the land he bought was actually an old Indian burial ground. See, John desecrated the land when he dug it up to build a house. Two of John's sons were out playing in the woods one day. They came across, while digging, a human skull. While playing around with the skull, they dropped it, knocking out some of its teeth. There's been an apparition that has been seen asking for its teeth. Then in 1817, the disturbances began with just sounds like pounding on the doors, slaps on the wall, and even eerie chain rattling. It didn't take long before an animal showed up that they couldn't identify. It was described in one report as being half dog, half rabbit. John Bell's children started complaining of the bed sheets being pulled over their heads as they slept. This went on for an entire year since the family was entirely too scared to come forward to tell anyone. So when things became completely unbearable, John Bell finally confided in one of his neighbors, James Johnson. Mr. Bell actually invited James and his wife to stay the night. And after several nights of witnessing all of the strange things that John Bell had spoken of, the neighbor suggested that more people should be told. Before long, people were coming from miles around to witness the unexplainable because the Bell Witch family now had so much energy coming into their home, the vengeful spirit got the voice it desired. The spirit mentions that it was the witch, Kate Batts. Kate Batts was a mean old neighbor of John's. She was an outcast in the Red River community, having very little money and doing the majority of the hard labor on her farm since her husband had been paralyzed in an accident years before. Kate had a habit of trying to impress people, making a scene and always wanting to be the center of attention. Apparently, President Andrew Jackson was the first person that coined the name Bell Witch after he came to the Bell home for a visit, but we'll get into that here in a bit. On Kate's deathbed, she swore she would haunt John and his descendants forever. All firstborn males will be doomed to have negativity and tragedy in their lives forever. Kate apparently had two main reasons for haunting the Bell Farm. One was to kill John Bell, since she believed that John had treated her unfairly on a land deal when she was alive. The second reason was to stop John's youngest daughter, Betsy, from marrying a certain neighbor boy named Joshua Garner. John and Betsy received the worst of the physical abuse. Betsy began having her hair pulled, pinched, and slap marks left on her face. Poor John Bell wasn't forgotten about either. He began suffering from choking episodes where his throat would swell and he would claim that it felt like he had a stick stuck in his throat. Damn, poor guy. You know, this brings new meaning to the saying, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I know that's right. So, Kate Batts made a promise. John would die in the worst way. In 1820, his family found him dead with no explanation. Some people believe that he was poisoned as a smoking vial was found in his room. It is said that the Bell Witch proudly claimed responsibility for John's death. And then in 1821, just as Kate wanted, Betsy broke off her engagement to Joshua Garner. Since they couldn't do anything without the entity terrorizing them, anyone that even tried to help was violently injured. 
what makes this story even stranger is that in 1824, Betsy married her old school teacher, Richard Powell. Powell began teaching in the area in 1815, and during his time teaching, he developed feelings for Betsy. He became a frequent visitor to the Bell home before becoming friends with Betsy's parents. It wasn't long after this that the mysterious noises started. What makes this even creepier is that the same year Betsy ended her engagement to Gardner, Powell's first wife died. Rumors have it that Powell was very much into the occult. Well, with Betsy no longer engaged to Garner and John Bell Sr. dead, Kate had gotten what she wanted. She said goodbye to the family, promising to return in seven years. And Kate made good to her promise. Exactly seven years later, Kate visited John Bell Jr. According to legend, she gave him future prophecies of future events such as a civil war and World Wars One and Two. This time, though, she didn't stay long. Three weeks to be precise. This time, Kate said she'd return in 107 years. But here's where public opinions are divided. Some say she did return, while others say she never left. <clears throat> the year was 1935, and the closest living relative at the time was a Nashville physician named Dr. Charles Bailey Bell. Dr. Bell died in 1945. Where the Bell House is, people have been known to disappear in the dense forest, never to be seen again. So the people of Adams, Tennessee do not like strangers coming around asking questions. On the edge of the property is a cave, the Bell Witch Cave. The cave is 490 feet deep with very narrow halls. Just inside the cave is a shallow grave site of what is to believe to have been a young Indian girl. I say believed because the body was stolen 200 years ago. Deep inside the cave, it gets cold. So cold, some have said they could see their breath. Shadows, vicious growling, and other creepy noises have been heard coming from the Bell Witch Cave. Visitors have had dizziness, nausea, and even hallucinations, giving the person the urgency to get out of the cave as quickly as possible. A male voice has been heard quite frequently. You can actually take tours of the cave. There's also a replica of the house on the property. Many believe the cave marks the entrance to the doorway through which Kate came into this world, departed, and who knows, perhaps even returns today. A lot of the bizarre modern day incidents are reported in and around the cave. Another story is based on an incident that happened in the 1800s. A group of young boys decided to explore the cave. One boy within the group explored a little too far and ended up getting himself stuck in a tiny space within the cave. Using only the light of his candle and the wick slowly burning out, he screamed for help. In the darkness, the boy heard a female voice say, I'll get you out. And with that, he felt his legs being pulled. He was pulled back all the way to the cave entrance. The boy never found out who or what it was that saved him. Was it the Bell Witch? Over the years, so many people have traveled from far away to visit the Bell's house that it had to be torn down for safety reasons. The historic Bell Witch Cave Incorporated has preserved some of the artifacts from the original cabin. They have also reconstructed the cabin that the Bell family lived in. And at night, in those woods, the townspeople say they hear strange noises. Human hair made into a doll was found in these woods. People say they just see eyes in the distance. You know, Lindsay, when I did live in Tennessee, we lived in the hills, sort of a valley. I myself could hear things. A story I grew up with was about a man and a woman. They were just sitting in their living room, but they were talking bad about the Bell Witch. And all of a sudden, the ceiling caved in, killing them instantly. This story always gave me goosebumps like it is right now. So, was John purely the victim or the reason for the curse? <laughs> so, I guess the moral of this story is if you have Bell in your family tree... Well, you're screwed. I wonder if that's where batshit crazy came from. 
Who knows? I'm certainly not looking to find out myself. I think that was better. Because the first the first time, I think we were both kind of tired. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so rifting. So, President Jackson, um, it said in the documentary that he hung out at their house. He would drink with John. So when I was doing research on this episode, I found several historians from Adams, Tennessee, that had said that uh, Andrew Jackson was the one who coined the term the Bell Witch. I'm assuming it was had something to do with the fact that it was on the Bell property. And back in those times, everybody was considered a witch. If you had a wart, you were considered a witch. If you had bad luck, you were considered a witch. If you looked at somebody funny, you were considered a witch. If you turned a man down, you were considered a witch. I mean, anything in those days could have gotten you to be coined as a witch. I mean, look at the Salem witch trials. You know, so many people lost their lives because of a certain group of people. It, none of those people were witches. Exactly. My daughter, she's read some about the Salem witch trials. She's very curious about paranormal and things like that. She's kind of weird like me. Um, but she was asking, you know, why, it, if you were just in the slight bit different, they coined you as a witch. And what was so different about Betsy that, you know, it, she, why was she so different? So if you think about Kate Batts' lifestyle, she's doing all this hard labor on the farm. Since her husband is paralyzed, he can't, you know, help her around the, uh, the house and everything, you know, that kind of farm work will, will beat you down. So you look rough, you look ragged. I mean, maybe that's where the witch part came from. Like I said, look, back to what I said, take somebody who, who looks different than everybody else. They're, they're going to be accused as being a witch. I watched um, part of uh, a documentary that he is claims to be the last Bell male, and he has a son, and his life goal is to make sure that his son is okay. And I thought that was very interesting. That's I would love to know more about this story. I think it's really fascinating, and I'm definitely interested in watching the documentary that you watched. Yeah, definitely. I think, like you said, we could go so far in depth in the his just the history of this family and the farm and the cave. Uh, I, I think it would become an obsession. I think that was one one thing that really drew me to this story is there's so many unanswered questions and I was right there. I lived right there. To me, this was an extremely fascinating story. I have a question for you. How far did you grow up from the Bell Farm or from the, the Bell Witch Cave? Probably, I'd say 30 minutes uh, east of Adams. So, did you, ever, did you ever go out there at like, um, yes, actually, my now husband and his best friend, we went for a little, um, what would you say, excursion to uh, find the Bell Witch graveyard, gravesite, the I'm cave, cut, whatever we could this, find. Cutting all this out. No, you're not. You know, you didn't, but it was fun. And it's a question, and we're rifting, so shut yes. up. Yes. Um, we unfortunately did not find anything. We heard a lot of noises, but, you know, it's the woods. Um, as a child, I did hear kind of moaning at night outside. It, it was kind of, you got the, that bone ch curling chill when you went outside. You didn't want to be outside by yourself. It was weird. I live in the city and I don't want to be outside by myself, but that's a completely different story for a completely <laughs> different podcast altogether. It puts the lotion on its skin <laughs> or else it gets the hose again. 
As always, friends, we're wishing you unpleasant dreams. I'm Amanda. And I'm Lindsay. And we will catch you next time when we discuss Mercy Brown in Rhode Island on Blood and Black Lace.